My great grandfather said life is on the wire. Everything else is just waiting. Nick Walinda's life is always about keeping balance. Nick faces unique challenges as a normal guy with a not so normal job. It's hard for people to relate to somebody who walks on a cable the size of a nickel a thousand feet in the air, and I understand that. Nick's family has been performing professionally for more than 200 years. His great grandfather, Carl, brought high wire performing into the family in the early 1900s and worked with Ringling Brothers in Barnum and Bailey's circus for decades. He created the seven person pyramid on the wire and walked over almost every stadium in the United States at that time. He really created the legacy and I really kind of live in the shadows of him. Everything I do is kind of to pay tribute to him because I wouldn't be where I am if he didn't pave that road and pass on that mantra that I live by, which is never give up. Nick was brought up performing, but he didn't always plan to follow in his family's footsteps. As I was growing up, my parents were really struggling to make ends meet, and I saw that. And my parents really said, you know, this isn't a career path you should take. Go to school, study, go to college, and go a different direction. And I really focused on that, and I got accepted to go to Southeastern Bible College in Lakeland, Florida. I planned on going there, and then eventually going off to become a pediatrician. But I struggled because I had so much passion for performing. Then Nick's family was invited to perform a seven-person pyramid for the first time since it fell in 1962, and two family members were killed. I thought it was gonna be my final goodbye. I thought I was gonna perform in Detroit, and we can at least kind of regain this legacy and show that our family can still do this stuff. The performance was successful, and the extensive media coverage got Nick's attention. I decided, you know what, I am gonna carry this on, but I'm gonna carry it on in a big way, and I'm gonna make sure to do big events that the whole world knows about. That was really my mindset from that point on. Nick went on to set seven world records, but it wasn't always easy. There were still always struggles, and I've been extremely blessed since then and had some amazing opportunities. Of course, Niagara Falls was one of those huge ones. One of the most memorable walks in my career was going back to San Juan, Puerto Rico, where my great-grandfather did lose his life in 1978 and recreate that walk. Nick was raised in a Christian home, and his faith has always been a part of his life. There's no question in my mind that God has laid these desires in my heart to carry on this family industry. I think that God has given me a very unique talent, and I can use that to bring glory to his name. There was actually a headline in a paper not too long ago, the Tim Tebow of the tightrope, which is really cool. He used that platform of playing football and was really able to touch a lot of people's lives. And I consider that I have that, you know, I have an amazing platform as well. Nick trains hard for each performance and says that he doesn't consider his feats death-defying. I don't see what I do as being more dangerous than a police officer. What I do is extremely calculated. I don't think God keeps me, holds me on the wire as I'm walking across, but God's given me a unique talent and it's up to me whether I train properly for that. But I also have trained my entire life to catch that wire. If I were to fall, gravity pulls you down. I train for the high winds, I train on a cable the same length and, and overtrain. I know that I've walked a wire in training in 90 mile an hour winds before, and that didn't blow me off. We have rescue crews standing by that can be at me anywhere on that wire within 60 seconds to grab me off and pull me to safety. And it's important I always maintain that high level of respect for what I do and the dangers involved with it. In fact, Nick says that his biggest concern during his walk across Niagara Falls was the tether he was made to wear. It was something that I was very unaccustomed with, unfamiliar with, and I'm very uncomfortable with. So I'm excited that I'm able to do this next walk, you know, in the way that my family's done it for generations. The tether can actually cause you to trip up. It could tangle around your neck, it could tangle around your, you never know what's gonna happen. My great grandfather had an older brother that fell into a net and was bounced out and killed. And his mindset, he's passed it on to next generations, was if you have a net or a tether, your mindset is you can use that. So you become complacent, you become relaxed. Nick's immediate family is a big part of his life. He and his wife, Arendera, both come from a long line of performers and have three children together. It's so important to me that every time before I do any of these big events, I get in a circle and pray with my family. And I always say, you know, give God the glory. Let God get the glory out of what I'm doing. That is very, very important to me that people, they don't praise Nick Walenda, but they praise God for these amazing abilities. And I think that that's part of showcasing like the Grand Canyon to me. Myself, it's hard to deny that there is a God when you see the Grand Canyon. That's my heart, and that's why I like to show these amazing places off around the world. 
I would walk across Niagara Falls, the Grand Canyon, if no one was there. It's about fulfilling a dream. It's important to me that people are inspired by what I do, that they, they see it as an inspiration that their, their dreams are possible too. It all may seem a bit nerve-wracking, but Nick says his most peaceful moments have been on the wire. While I'm on that wire, people can't understand how could you be peaceful? Well, when I'm praising God, there's no one else to talk to, and it's my own quiet time. You know, there's that prayer closet. Well, the wire often is and has been my prayer closet. Nick has written a book about his experiences entitled Balance. He says that it's often difficult in life to keep that balance, but it helps to focus on what's important. I was walking across Niagara Falls and there was raging waters on my left and below me waters were boiling underneath and mist flying in front of me. But instead of focusing on all those problems that I had around me, I focused on the other end. Just very, very similar to our walk with Christ. It's not always rosy. It's not always easy. Life isn't always, you know, a dream. But with God, all things are possible and there is that light at the end of the tunnel.